Namaste. So here's another in our series of daily sutras. This one is from Patanjali Yoga Sutras. The fourth chapter, or the conclusion, which talks about the ultimate realization of yoga and its causes and methods. So let's take a look. Nimittam aprayojakam prakritinam varanabhedastu tata kshetrikavat. Good deeds, etc., are not the direct causes in the evolution of the yogi's nature, but they break the obstacles to the evolution of nature as a farmer breaks the obstacles to the course of water, which then flows down by its own nature. So in India, in traditional farming, the fields are irrigated by a network of small canals and dikes. Each field or plot is surrounded by a dike, a hard earthen uh, dam, really, which has usually a footpath on the top. And next to that is a ditch, a canal, where the water flows down and fills up the plot. And each plot is gated by an earthen dam. And, and this can just be, you know, a few shovelfuls of earth piled up to stop the water from flowing in that direction. So when the farmer wants to irrigate his plot, he breaks the dam and then just stands back and lets the water flow. And because the fields have been engineered and laid out and graded, so the water will flow on its own nature and cover the area, cover the field. The farmer doesn't have to do anything except get out of the way. And Patanjali is saying the same is true of yoga. And this, you know, we have talked about this so many times, that enlightenment is our very nature. Enlightenment, pure consciousness, unconditioned awareness, objectless awareness and being, the pure nature is already there in everyone, in every sentient being. All we have to do is break down the blocks that keep it from flowing naturally. Now in our case, the life energy, Kundalini, wants to flow upward. Just like water, its own nature is to flow downward. Similarly, the Kundalini, by its nature, wants to flow upwards. But there's a block. Actually, there's several blocks. We've discussed this many times. Here's our good old chart. And you can see the Kundalini resides in the Muladhara Chakra at the base of the spine in the form of a coiled up snake, three and a half coils. Huh? And then as the blocks are removed from the chakras, she glides upward until she is able to unite with Shiva in the Sahasrara at the top of the head. That's enlightenment. That's moksha. That's liberation. So all we have to do is get rid of the blocks. Now the blocks are of two kinds. The blocks in the chakras themselves and the grantis or knots between the groups of chakras. You see there's two chakras in the lower group, two in the middle group, two in the upper group, and then Sahasrara chakra is all by itself. And between each group of two chakras, there is a granti. The Brahma granti is between the Dantian and solar plexus. The Vishnu granti is between the heart and throat chakras. And the Rudra granti is between the third eye and the crown. That's why I say, and I did a whole video on this, <laughs> 
that yoga begins from sex and that we have to allow the sex center to open fully in order to get sufficient amount of energy to open the other chakras. Otherwise, if the sex center is suppressed or repressed, the full energy will not be available, the kundalini will not be able to rise higher, and will get entangled in all kinds of neurotic behaviors, um, possessiveness, clinging, uh, lust, jealousy, so many negative emotions. Huh? And this will effectively stop any progress in self-realization. And this is why people with very little spiritual knowledge are almost universally seen to be sexually neurotic. They have not dealt with the blocks in the sex center. And so how can they open up the others? So this is why Tantra is the ultimate path or the ultimate technique of self-realization. Because Tantra begins from sex. Not that we should overindulge. Huh? The Western Tantrikas mostly uh, treat Tantra as if it was just a sexual overindulgence. Just like the Western so-called yogis, they claim to follow Patanjali, teach asana and virtually nothing else. But if you look at Patanjali and read him deeply, and with the background of the other tantric literatures, you'll see that actually he's giving a bona fide method. And it doesn't stop with asana. In fact, the word asana is mentioned in the Yoga Sutras exactly twice. So asana is not considered a big deal, at least by Patanjali. So then why do modern so-called yoga teachers stress asana almost to the exclusion of everything else? No, he says uh, good deeds should be performed. And this is yama niyama, which are supposed to come before asana. Yama is what should be done, good deeds. Niyama is what should not be done. Harmful deeds, ugra karma, works designed to uh, destroy or harm others. So uh, good work should be done, giving gifts in charity, education, medical care, feeding people, and of course all the rituals of puja in the temple, and living a virtuous life of controlled consciousness, uh, controlled senses, avoiding negativity, avoiding uh, divisive talk and gossip and like that, respecting people's privacy, and above all, respecting the fact that everyone is basically enlightened. It's only the blocks that are covering it. So Patanjali here is talking about how to remove those blocks and regain our original nature. He calls it the evolution of the nature, prakriti. Prakriti means the nature, the real nature of the individual, which is basically Brahman. So Brahman is at the root of everything, and by following the yoga system, we uncover that and reveal its full glory within oneself. And this is self-realization. So he is saying the effort of yoga is not to add something like mystical powers or um, different physical attributes, you know, like uh, gymnastics and, and stuff like that. It's not to add something that we're lacking. It's to remove the things that are covering the real nature. 
Now, this is a far different concept of yoga than is taught in most yoga schools today, even in India. Uh, that these things should be done. Yes, one should take care of the body and one should perform uh, religious rituals in worship of one's chosen deity. Yes, one should chant mantras and make offerings and give in charity and so many things. And this will automatically lead to bhakti. Bhakti means love of God. And since God is within everyone, it really means love of everyone. So anyone who's engaged in harmful activities that result in hurting others cannot be a yogi. If one is eating meat, for example, which involves killing animals, this is vi-yogi. Uh, it is against yoga. It's vikarma or ugra karma. Against good karma, bad karma. Uh, so one should stop all vicious activities and then follow this path of virtue, which naturally leads to love. And love, when it's mature, when it ripens, automatically becomes meditation. I was just talking with a friend of mine about uh, when I met my uh, final wife and how after we were together for about a month or six weeks or so, I started getting the most powerful urge to meditate. And I started meditating and I was just drawn into it more and more until I was meditating like 12 hours a day. And after six weeks or so of this, I spontaneously experienced Kundalini rising without any distress, without any problems. And then first stage enlightenment, first path, stream entry enlightenment, where I saw Brahman in the world and the world in Brahman. Now, it still took a while to get the ultimate uh, vision, the ultimate enlightenment, where one realizes Brahman as oneself. Huh? But that's where it starts. And it came about because of opening the sex center. And this gave sufficient energy that the other centers could open all by themselves, just with a minimal practice. I was just sitting, Zen style, not doing anything, just watching observing what was happening. And as the energy pooled at the base of the spine, Kundalini arose automatically. At the time, I did not have the background to understand this. So this led to the rather astonishing realization that the understanding of the theory is not required for enlightenment. Simply doing the practice will work. And of course, the problem is, without understanding the theory, it's kind of unlikely that one will do the practice or do it properly. So I was just blessed. I was just very fortunate. And I have to give all credit to my gurus and teachers for uh, pushing me in the right direction. And of course, the ultimate uh, credit goes to the goddess herself who wants all of us to become enlightened. She wants to meet and merge with Shiva in all of us because this is our real nature. And we can achieve it through simply removing the blocks. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung.